My Father has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works I have shown you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy, and because you being a man make yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said you are gods? If he called them gods, to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. Do you say of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said I am the Son of God? If I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. But if I do, though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Therefore, they sought again to seize him, but he escaped out of their hand. And he went away again beyond the Jordan to the place where John was baptizing at first, and there he stayed. Then many came to him and said, John performed no sign. But all the things that John spoke about this man were true, and many believed in him there. Okay, we could we could start. Um, so, I, I had a doozy of a class prepared, and um, it took for about five hours to get ready, just sitting here. And uh, I would never give that class to a lot of new people. <laughs> so then the room is full of new people. So I'm, I'm not, I don't know for sure what I'm going to do with it. Um, I don't want to scare anyone away or freak anyone out. And, and, and one of the things I had to say was about the cloud of unknowing. And, uh, but I was going to go from assuming everyone knows what that is and then talking about how, in a refined way how to apply it um, to knowledge in the world. And I'm going to have to do that because it's all I've got. But I, if, if I thought there's going to be six new people, I'd either just make the class, what is the cloud of unknowing, or don't make it about that at all. <laughs> and I also had a creative way of getting to that from this scripture, which is, it would take a while. Um, one other mistake I made, I, I was out here a while. I didn't think it was very long, but it's 15 pages of notes. That's too much. So <laughs> everything, everything's a mess, for sure. Um, I, what, I think what I'll do is I'll turn this whole thing into a video in the next couple of days and just try to wing this one best I can. Uh, so, okay, so the first thing I want to say is I'm going to comment on the scripture we read last week, not this week. So Jesus says, uh, last week he says, and I, it's only paraphrased, it's not an exact quote, this command I have received from my Father, I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. And what he's talking about is, so uh, everyone knows the story that Jesus ends up crucified. But way before um, the Jews are talking openly about killing him because of his message, way before that, he starts to tell his disciples that he's going to go away and then and and he'll be gone and 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 they're troubled because they think where is he going to go and the Jews are thinking where is he going to go but over time he begins to reveal that he's going to be put to death by by the Jewish people and and it, it's 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 i think just incomprehensible to his disciples because they're all Jews and they're certain about one thing they're certain that um, when the Messiah comes back, um, he's going to take over militarily and politically and put them in charge. <laughs> so, you know, uh, they're talking about land ownership and, you know, what it's going to be like to be in charge and have those pesky Romans out of the way. And, you know, they, they've got a very specific idea about what it looks like to have a savior come. 
And Jesus is, is um, he's showing them something else. They're thinking of worldly power. That's what they're thinking of. They're thinking of worldly power. And that we're going to be set up and have some power. And finally, we won't be picked on. This is how they're looking at it. And Jesus is, is going to show them something completely different that is shocking to them. And, and, and I think that it's genuinely devastating to them. And, and that goes against every single notion of power that they have. But not just them. It, it goes against every notion of power we have today. Uh, there's a stage or a, a transmission from God in the Christian system. Uh, and I'm just going to take great liberty here and say it the way I say it, not the way uh, some uh, great authors say it. But um, it's called the cloud of unknowing. And, and I'm going to describe it best I can. So I had a lot of phone calls today, along with having to do this. Two people I spoke to on the phone, I'm going to refer to about it. One, one is in um, South America right now. And he's a student of the center, but he had to go away for a year. Six months into the year, he's going to come back. But right now, he's still living in South America. And, and he, I think, um, I still considered him a beginner, and once I told him that, and he didn't like it, and that proves you're a beginner. <laughs> because anybody who's not a beginner, if you say, yeah, you're still a beginner, they say, right, freak, I know. But if you're not, then you've got your hackles up. <laughs> so you know who I'm talking about, my friend. And, but here's the thing. So <laughs> he's a great guy and, and real sincere, like uh, really genuinely a sincere person on this journey. But he went to, he, he's, he's now in South America and he's still doing it. And, and here's one of the things that I thought was beautiful that he said today is I'm losing my intelligence. Is this normal? I'm losing my intelligence. I feel like I'm getting dumber. And, you know, that might be a problem. Um, it could be a vitamin deficiency. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and the other person I talked to on the phone would have chased that down a nutrition road for four years trying to fix it and wasting all that time on it, trying to fix it. Um, and that's what's going to, going to try to work that into her piece. Um, but what actually is happening with him is his, his egoic false self-structure that has to die uh, to enter into to love. See, the, the thing about the Christian tradition is we're invited to enter into infinite love. Jesus sometimes calls it eternal life. And, you know, people think of eternal life as you live forever. And that's, it's not really it. That's not it. It, it is, you live forever, yes, but it's not that. Eternal life is, in this moment, you're experiencing eternal life. Uh, 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 maybe a better, it, it's, it's not fair to say infinite life, but that's a, your mind could grasp it better. There, there seems to be a dimension of time to it when you experience it. It, it eternal life. Uh, if you if you if you experience blinding light, it's you know, you're being struck by eternal life from God. You've opened to it. If you if you look into these rays of light that are shining on you, they go out forever and ever. You can you can you can see somehow. I don't know how to explain it, but you can see that this light goes on forever. It's eternal, and it's infinite. And what Jesus is inviting people into, and you don't have to wait till you die to go there. This is the main point of the center here is you don't have to wait till you're dead to get it. Is he's inviting people to eternal life, to infinite eternal love. But, um, you know, uh, our false self structure is unable to love like that. It's unable to. It's afraid. It's hurt. It's wounded. It's damaged. It's warped. You know, there's big messes in there. And, 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 and a big part of the, the Christian healing that takes place, a big part of what God does in the soul that's on an authentic Christian journey is begins to heal all the things that are in disorder that, that make it so this person cannot or will not love infinitely. And then that can be judgment and it can be all kinds of it's wounds and brokenness and complexes of all kinds of issues that form into some kind of false character structure. So this, this guy um, is smart. So, you know, okay, so he's using his intelligence with his false 
character structure to get by in the world. And so he's come to see himself as sort of a philosopher, thinker. So, okay, so how does God going to cure that? Well, let's just lower that IQ by about 50 <laughs> for a while. Why? Is that mean? Is he saying, God, oh, take away your intelligence? No. This person's false character structure is so wrapped up in being really smart that if you could just numb that intelligence for six months or so, he would have a way better chance of unhooking from it. Just a way better chance. So you see, this is not a technique. It's not a, like you practice this breathing technique to make yourself dumber. <coughs> First of all, who would do it? <laughs> like, I'll do one to make myself smarter. <laughs> Taller, better looking, I'm in. But less intelligent for a while? And I'm not interested in, no one's interested in that. But this is the cure, see? So the things he said to me on the phone today, it tells me that it, it, with not 100% certainty, but with, it's highly likely that he's beginning to enter the cloud of unknowing. It's an initiation into Christian spirituality. And I want to describe what it's like to have it. Okay? What it's like to have, it's, it's like this. You feel surrounded by a cloud all the time. And the cloud is uh, like rain cloud, thick, thick rain cloud. And it makes your mind quiet. It silences your mind. This is an, it's an initiation that you get. It, it numbs your mind a little bit. It, um, I've never seen anyone get fired for it. It works just fine at work. You'll, be, you'll, you'll get by. They're not interested in destroying your life. But, but, but it quiets that down. And it, it's a, a protection against all the ways in which you are plugged into the world's consciousness. And it's different for everyone. It, it, everyone's plugged in differently. But th there's this power that God just, the Holy Spirit, it, one of our band members wrote a song, one of our best songs called Mr. Cloud. And it's about the cloud. <laughs> and it, it, it descends upon you and, and it wraps you up and it makes you feel secure and safe in not knowing the answer to things. And that's not how we operate in this world now. That's, that's a little counterintuitive. It, it makes you feel secure and safe and not knowing. And it, it numbs things or anesthetizes things enough that it gives you the ability to stop thinking about solutions to your problems. To just stop. It, it's, I mean, it's an initiation that takes some time. It doesn't come overnight. But you get the ability to stop thinking about, it's, it's, it's really also tied to God, like we know God is love, but we don't know what love is, so is that word very useful? We know God is infinite life, but we don't know what life is, so how useful is that word? It, it, it's, it's tied to apophaticism, which is another initiation in Christianity to do with knowledge, to do with the profound limitations of knowledge for the human being, and the ability to do without it unless it's needed. I hope that lands or makes sense. So then a person that, you know, if I wake up, I don't have thoughts on my mind. I don't have thoughts running through my mind when I wake up because I've been initiated into the cloud of unknowing. So I don't have to think unless I want to. I mean, there's, there's limits to my ability to say that as a true statement. But it's, it's profound how much I don't have to think unless I want to be thinking. So then, so, so then, what a relief that is. Think of what a relief that is. You're just sitting here, right? There's no, you're driving your car, there's no problems, but you can't stop thinking about problems. Think, think, think all the time, problem. There's no problems. It's not happening, but gotta think of it all the time. 
he, see, that's a problem, right? That's a big, so the cloud of unknowing comes over and it, and it heals this. But in one of the, so that's this guy. He's getting initiated in the cloud of unknowing. If he goes through that and comes out the other side, I'll never say you're a beginner again. Why? Well, because his, it, to do that, the whole like thing he created to be okay in this world, super, very, very smart and very a philosopher, deep thinker, filmmaker, that, that false person he invented to sort of cover up for insecurities and the meanness of people and all, you know, just all the dangers of the world, that person will be dead if he goes through this. Will have died with Jesus on the cross. He'll be gone. Or he'll be dead enough that it can't sway his life anymore. And I, in speaking to him on the phone, you never know for sure, but he, all the buzzwords of making it on that way is happening to him. Um, he's not doing it, which means he doesn't like it. <laughs> like, you know, if, if I could, like, visualize that happening to me I'd be comfortable with that because I'm making it happen but he's on the Christian path which means it's happening to him <clears throat> then it's a little creepy just a little ah, I don't want to be dumber <laughs> I feel vulnerable not walking into a room being the smartest and most insightful person in the room I don't want to feel like that like I'm not, that's what, what I did. I had insecurities I could keep at bay by being the smartest. It, you know, it could be the prettiest, right? Or the strongest or the, the most scoffing. <laughs> just, the disdain for all things that you dummies are into. I mean, you know, we all have just whatever way we can to get by in this world and feel safe. And, but all of it is false, so it has to go. So that's what's happening to him. But the cloud of knowing could come another way. And, and on the other phone call... Um, a, a woman got on this path, and um, who I think is doing uh, amazingly, just so neat. Um, and but right off the bat, you know, uh, a person whose character structure was I'm the one that's stable, and I'm there to serve other people because other people are really have been messed up in my whole lifetime, and I've been solid and strong. I'm the stable one. I'm the I'm the helper, the the servant. All of a sudden, that false character structure that can't enter union because it's not true, it starts getting challenged by problems. Uh, physical disorders that keep arising and are hard to find the cause of, and emotional disorders that keep arising. And so now, so that character structure has found its self-esteem by being the stable one. I'm the stable one. So now all of a sudden, God just goes, Tink, you're no longer the stable one. Let's reveal all the disorder that you've been keeping at bay by that. But see, that doesn't sound like fun. That doesn't sound like, you know, this being of light visits you, you want to leave with gold rings. <laughs> that shoot rays of stuff on people that are cool, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you want to leave with superpowers and you leave with like, you've been diminished. You've been, you've been diminished. You, something's going away. So her uh, way of navigating that as a beginner who hasn't yet surrendered to it was to um, invest lots and lots of time in learning what these disorders are and how to fix them with nutrition. And the thing about that is you, you uh, enter a world that is what we call materialism. So every, every cause has a physical reason and a physical solution so now every symptom you look it up well this is a deficiency in this and if you take this with this that'll fix it and you can and and see you can chase that forever and you know uh some of it's a little true so they get a little bit of benefit but there's also like your soul's pretty powerful so placebo effect you're being told this will fix it so you fix it so now the disorder god revealed in her to heal her is now getting fixed or try, or or she's spending all of her time trying to fix it with external means external means by the way that don't even recognize the existence of god or the soul so so now you've got this vehicle that is spirit and body in relationship with infinite god 
and you're leaning on a paradigm that is materialism that doesn't even recognize the existence of God and sees everything as a mechanical problem to be fixed. That's, that's a God slayer. That's a God killer that kills God. You can't enter a paradigm and take it on yourself and live it that is atheist in nature and not be poisoned by that and not have your soul diminished by that. So then how in the heck is, <laughs> do you see the danger here? It, it, and like, like um, nutrition's okay, <laughs> but, but what she's doing with it isn't okay. Not at all. Because for certain, God tinked her to get her off of her perfect strength and show her some weakness where she could find some surrender and some humility and some need for help. And um, when we got done talking, I thought, it, I did that with crystals. <laughs> I was a crystal healer before I found Jesus and um, I had, you know, problems, energy problems and psychological problems and emotional problems. And there was a crystal for everything. And I got really good at it. I mean, I spent hours and hours a day at it. And I think most of it is placebo and some of it, there's some legitimate stuff. But here's the thing. I got where I was always happy. Always. And I always felt joy. Always. And that was a, essentially the absolute end of spiritual growth for me. I fixed it all. Just fixed it all. So then how's God can't reach me? And it, it's not as if those things really went away. I just felt other things louder. Just joy was really loud. The other things were still there, but it, if you got enough perfume, you can't tell. So, so it's, it's the same. I did it with crystals, what she was doing with nutrition. And then she started having sleep troubles. And it's like, that can be bad. And I, you know, I, I, I hear everyone, don't hit me. But also the monks and nuns say sleep is an addiction. Sleep as little as possible. You'll get enlightened much faster if you do. So she starts getting some insomnia. Got to start fixing it right now. Right now. I mean, for, sleep is the new god. It's like the, everything is sleep. If you don't get perfect sleep, everything's bad. I, I can't relate to that. It, God keeps me awake for sure. So that the next day I'm softened and I enter into heavenly places while I'm walking around. And perfect sleep means I don't hit those places. So, it, so don't stop sleeping, because that would be self-will. I'm just saying when it happens, when it happens, there's something there to learn. So then this materialism, materialism worldview, it's, everything is a physical cause, physical cure. Uh, we can't fix it all yet. We don't even know if there was all just physical causes, but we've just assumed it. And it gets you chasing this, this answer where you control everything. And where is God in that? Where is God? Where is God in that? So then, you know, this person, and uh, you start, you know, he, I told her I would hyperbolize and, and add, so no lies. But this, this person now, this hypothetical person maybe, um, they get it nailed, man. They got, but they've got it, but you've got to do it just right. It's, you're, you're, you're back in the law of karma, you certainly aren't living with forgiving God. There's like a right way to do it. And if you get it wrong, it doesn't work out. So you just got to get it all right. So now they're living a rigid, rigid schedule. Everything is rigidly scheduled to maintain a state of mind God probably doesn't even want them to be in. Probably. Almost certainly. Think, think, think about that. So 
this is one of those, this is why I wouldn't say anything of this to new people. Not you're new, you might be a master, but I'm saying new here, you know. I wouldn't say this to new people, but because it's a pastoral discussion. And what I mean by that is it could be taken 18 different wrong ways. <laughs> and you just can't run with it after this discussion. You just can't. There has to be discussions about it with your spiritual director. But, this, but I see this all the time. And essentially you can take a materialism worldview, take a materialism solution to that, to the problems in that world, and you can, um, you can rigid, you can get to a point where your whole life is structured by rigid materialistic uh, principles, and there's no room for God to act in your life at all. Very little room for God to act in your life. Okay. So, we never said to new people, so sorry. Very sorry. But there is something I could say that's useful. What's, what's it like to have the answer to that? So, so here's that I've got this ache. I got these weird digestive things going on. I'm, I'm getting insomnia. And now I'm done forking out the endless time and money to get that fixed. I'm just done with it. I'm done with it. Okay, so now what then? What is going on? Well, listen, you have this infinite God who loves you, who lives inside of you. And you can take anything that happens to you. As recently, you guys know, the worst thing that could ever happen to me happened to me, this betrayal, and it, I freaking wept uh, in the basement. And, you know, just, I mean, it felt like I got stabbed. I couldn't sleep for days because it hurt so bad. Literally, I couldn't fall asleep. And I'm so much better now because of it. I mean, I'm not kidding. I would never, ever wish that had not happened. I've made miles of progress because of it. Why, though? Well, I didn't go take drugs to fix the pain. I didn't run to a psychologist to fix me. I turned to God with my pain and my suffering, and God came through. And it looked like God wasn't coming through. I mean, you know, 10 nights, you can't sleep very much. You feel like someone has a knife in your back and they're twisting it. Literally, I can't believe the level of pain. It was unbelievable. Uh, it doesn't feel like God's coming through when God's coming through. It doesn't always. It, it, Cause see, Clinton, he's, he's pig-headed and he's rigid and he's hard. And sometimes, you know, 10 days of that, it softens me up. I'm, I need God now. I need God now. It's not a want. I'm not just looking to improve what I've already kicked ass at. <laughs> this is now a need. Now I need it. And I can ask in a way that I cannot ask if I don't need it. Then God comes through, and God come, came through in a way where it's like, whoa, dude, your whole entire character structure is disordered. And you could have never been hurt by this if it wasn't this disorder. And how about we just step into this new place where that wouldn't even hurt you? And I got, you know, one full foot in and, and most of my other foot in that other place and I'm a different person and it's freaking ridiculous. And I love it. But you gotta go to God with that suffering and not something else. You gotta go to God with that suffering and God heals that stuff. And, and it doesn't look like it's going to and, and, it, and it's weird and it's, you can look like a fool, too, because God doesn't care how you look, because you care how you look, and then that person that cares how it looks can't enter heaven, so it's got to go anyway. So they don't mind if you don't look great doing it. They don't mind if you don't look graceful. They just want you to go. Okay, so what's this woman supposed to do instead of what she's doing? Out of fear and control. She's afraid and control got to control everything and I'm afraid. What has she got to do? She really needs the cloud of unknowing. She really needs that, that computer to just stop working on it all the time, just to stop. You know, and, and, but, but that cloud of unknowing, it's a gift. It comes over you and, and it'll bring her into that silence. When Jesus said, I have the power to lay my life down, that means I have the power to die and I have the power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. You should never brush over that as if it has nothing to do with you. 
I mean, it has stuff to do with you on so many levels. We could stay 10 hours, and I'm not kidding. Why can he hear that command? Why? Why? How is it that Jesus can hear God's word and receive it so completely he has the power to die at will and resurrect at will? How? He has no other desire in his heart ever except to do God's will. That's how. See, God already wants to give it all to us. You know, I used to think I was climbing the ladder to enlightenment. You know, it's like a ladder and you got to just get up there. And I had some bad karma. So there's like a lot of weight to carry and it sucks. But I'm, you know, I'm going to got a work ethic for my dad. I'm going to work really hard and I'll just carry all that weight and I'm going to get there. That's how I saw it. But with Christianity, it's not that at all. You've got this God who loves you and wants to give it to you. And you're the only reason you don't have it. It's, it's, it's not something you've got to fight for or claw for. It's been given for free for no reason. Good karma, bad karma is absolutely irrelevant. God loves you and wants to give it to you. And all you have to do is receive it. And then you think, well, I can't receive. But then they say, yeah, but we'll heal that. We'll fix that. We'll get you to be able to receive Enter relationship with me. I'll show you the way. That's Jesus. And he has that kind of power for lots of reasons. I won't go into the Trinity again. It's new people, it's like another two-hour class. But he has that power in this context for this class because he always does God's will. And he's surrendered his own will enough that he never, ever wants anything except God's will. And then that means anything God wants to do through him, he can do. Because there's no resistance. So this woman has all these problems popping up and her intellect wants to figure it out. But what she needs to do is quiet down. And realize she doesn't live in a materialism universe where God it doesn't exist. She lives in a universe filled with God, which means every bit of that disorder has God in it. And every bit of the process of working whatever that disorder is through is a spiritual practice. It may or may not include external aids. There's no really rigid rule about that. It's just that the cloud the cloud is there. The cloud that protects you from all those thoughts, and from all of that thinking, from all of what people say you stop asking. We, we discussed that. She said, I tell people what's going on and they give me 15 things to try to fix it. I said, yes, stop telling them. It, it, you've invited information through the cloud to confuse you and distract you and dissipate your spirituality. Just keep it easy, man. Just take it easy. Uh, we talked about the, the extremes. You don't want to die because a doctor could fix it. So you're, like, you're not that rigid. <laughs> like there's a line where you just, I'll t I call it magic. I'll take magic any day. You know what I mean? There's a certain line where I'll just take the magic. No problem. I'm calling Western medicine magic. There's a line at which I'll just take it. Don't care zero qualms about it. There's no principled issue against it at all. But there's also a line at which you are so distracted and dissipated chasing that stuff you can't turn to God. And th see, this is the subtleness of it. So how do you know what's what? How do you know which information is from God or not? Well, you just reject it all outright first. Get in the cloud Get in the cloud where you don't care if the problem gets fixed or not. Get in the cloud where you don't mind if you're suffering, it's okay with you. Get in the cloud where you don't know if this is good or bad or not. Where you haven't defined everything to the point that you know all. Just get in the cloud and say, God, I don't know anything about this. What is your will? If you're in the cloud 
and you mean it, the grace of the cloud comes over you and you just won't find yourself having to think about it all the time. You just don't care. You care, but you don't care. It matters, but it doesn't matter. You wouldn't mind knowing if God wanted to tell you, but you don't need to know. You'd like these symptoms to end, but if they stay, I'll live with them. It's no big deal. If they help me in some way, I'd rather have it. Total neutrality and emptiness. When Jesus said, I only will to do God's will, he's also saying, I don't want anything else in this universe. That means he's never pulled by this and that. He's in the cloud. So then if you're in that cloud and you don't have to think against your will and you're not trying to solve your problems with your mind because you know that you're in a process with God that is going to resolve everything one way or another. You just know this. So you're at peace. You just trust. Then there's profound silence in that. There's profound silence in that. And then the slightest breeze from the Holy Spirit, you notice it. You just notice it. It just blows in and you you think... Since you're a Christian mystic, you say, eh, maybe that's from God, maybe it isn't, who knows? We'll see. But it just keeps blowing, and eventually it blows enough that you say, I don't know if it's from God or not, but it's sticking enough, I think I'll just check it out. And then you go to check it out, and you feel God's power dwell in you as you do, and you feel the confirmation of the Holy Spirit, and you think, okay, I'll check this out right until that power leaves, and... and That's the way it goes. But here's the thing, the cloud. It's not an ideology. It's not a belief system. It's not a, a set of principles you picked up from your parents. It's, it, what's driving you is nothing and the still small voice of the Holy Spirit in that cloud. That's the way. And then you can navigate really complex and difficult things um, easily Provided you don't think you need, provided you don't have to understand it now. So my life is nothing but answers in progress. <laughs> That's what it is. It's, it's like watching the most beautiful lesson plan unfold. It's so wonderful. But it, you, it's not like a mean teacher where you, if you don't try really hard, you won't get it. It's the other way. It's just simple. It's just so simple. Uh, I don't know if you ever read the Tao Te Ching. Uh, it's kind of the closest thing to Jesus I could find from Eastern spirituality. And um, one of the things it says, which I think is just freaking ridiculous, is that uh, great skill, great skill appears clumsy. And I, I think that is so profound. But I think he's talking about um, how a person living by the Spirit looks kind of like they don't know what they're doing because they don't. They don't. It, they, Jesus said the, 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 the wind of the Spirit blows where it will. And no one knows where it comes from or where it's going. So too is the person born again of the Spirit. But they look, they look dumb to people. They look like, you know, they don't look. Lao Tzu also says, everywhere I go, everyone's so confident. <laughs> he said, I alone am in doubt. Everyone knows exactly where they're going. I alone am lost. He goes on and on. All the things we think are great in the world, he's calling them sin. He said, I alone am al alone and purposeless. 
And then he said, I am different. I am nurtured by the great mother. <laughs> See, he's just saying what I just said. It's the same thing. You say, I, there's a sleep study. I know, I, I, I know, I know. <sighs> Did they control for who's meditating and who isn't? Did they control for what kind of meditation they're doing? Did they control for anything else? Is it just another one of those studies where they just throw it out there like it's like, it's like dogma. It's true for that group and all their circumstances we don't know anything about. That's true. But you can't extrapolate that to the whole world dogmatically. How come so many of our saints said sleep little and they came to infinite fire? Why? Maybe they know what they're doing. Maybe they were less concerned about a wrinkle on their eye when they woke up from less sleep than they were about the openness they felt towards God when they were just a little tired and diminished. Maybe. <laughs> you know, materialism's goal is just health and vitality and uh, maybe some money and, you know, beauty, if I could get that. And I wouldn't mind some cars. You know, there's like this thing materialism's looking for. And it's like, dude, you're going to die. You're, I'm 52 now. That's it. Like, I'm, there's less time now ahead than behind. I'm going to die. What am I doing? Trying to, like, stay young or something? I don't, it, it doesn't make sense. How about I use this life I have to attain union with God in eternity rather than attain that? This is why Jesus is different for this class. There's other reasons that are bigger. But for this class, this is why he has power like that. Because he's got no other voices, none talking. None. And he didn't master his mind through discipline. He surrendered his will. it's not about mastering your mind for this approach it's just saying okay God like I don't know the way I'm tired of running the show I make a lot of messes and I don't want to live the way I'm living anymore and I don't know what's wrong or right about what I'm doing and I don't know the way where we're going so I just give up just show me the way and that that disposition quiets the mind that disposition quiets the mind you're wondering well then well maybe I don't want to give myself to this God that might be a, a jerk you know <laughs> what does this God want for me you know what and uh, I don't know like what color of shirt God wants you to wear and I don't know what job God wants you to have I don't know man but I know what God wants you to have ultimately we know for sure what God wants you to have ultimately. We don't know the form it should take, but we know what God wants you to have. And it's a relationship with God. A relationship with God. The one true 
God that was not made by any other gods, that was never made, but that has always been, that is infinite life and is infinite consciousness and is infinite love. And that infinite power wants to know you so deeply and so profoundly that you glow with its fire, that you share in its consciousness, That's what it wants for sure.